What's going on guys, assalamu alaikum, welcome to Amigos Code. In this video, I want to talk to you about the best ways of you using if statements. Now, this is because um, on Discord, so we've got a channel where uh, people go and basically upload their repos and they want to get some feedback. And I've noticed that a bunch of you guys still having issues with if statements. So hopefully this video will address that and how you can start writing better if statements. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and literally uh, subscribe also smash that like button so i can keep on recording these videos if you're not part of the amigos World community go ahead and join both discord and private facebook group and the community is amazing so you should be part of it and i was talking so fast i don't know why cool so without further ado let's kick off this video what i want to teach you really is a technique called gold clauses basically here um it says that it's a chunk of code at the top of a function that serves a similar purpose to a precondition it typically does one or all of the following. It checks the passing parameters and returns with an error if they are not suitable, checks for the state of the object and bails out if the function call is inappropriate. Also checks for trivial causes and gets rid of them quickly. Now have a look. So this is a, a simple example. Draw. If not visible, then bail out. It's as simple as this. Now, the benefit of this is that you don't actually end up with, you know, a nested um, if statement. So if this go inside, if this go inside, if this go inside, and you can see the tree right here, which is not great. Now, let me show you. So this is very common with Golang. So have a look at this application, which I'm writing. And eventually I'm gonna do a video on this. Basically, it transcribes a bunch of audios. It gives me some text, which I can then translate all of my videos and whatnot, but basically have a look. So in here, upload file, we try and read the file. If it's an error, so if error equals to nil, bail out and we return the error. Otherwise, construct the URL, the request, and then we send the request here. If there was an error, we bail out, return empty with the error. So this is very, very common in Golang. So some people uh, don't like Golang because of the error handling, um, but basically this is how it works. Then again, so we're going to try and read the response body in here. If there was an error, bail out. Have a look, we check the response. If there's an error, right? So yeah, so if there's an error in here, we bail out. Otherwise, right? So if all of these things didn't throw an error, then we know for sure what we want from the request and we return nil. So you can see that this is awesome, right? So the error is nil. So I think, let, let me have a look, have a look. So again, so this is another example in here. So we do a bunch of things. If it's error, return, uh, I think this is something else. Uh, what's the name of the method here? So submit request, right? So again, if error, then basically you return um, basically an empty response with the error. Otherwise in here, so we try and marshal, we get JSON blob, and then we return the um, basically request response, right? Now, let me show you what you guys have been doing so far, and I'm gonna improve on a bunch of if statements. So let's start with a forum backend, and I'll leave the names of uh, everybody that sent these requests and also the repo so you can go and check them out. So here I've got a bookmark. So let's just open up post service in here, line 61. Let's have a look. So line 61, what we have in here is, so we have a post, we have a user, we try and find by, by the username, if the post get user equals to user, then we do this, else we throw an exception, right? So one comment here is, I think this right here is inefficient and you should be using joins on your query, right? So this is wrong. But anyway, so this is not what I'm teaching here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to reverse this, right? So if the post in here is not equal, so it's not equal to the user, we're going to do this, what you've just done in here, right? And have a look, we don't even need the else statement anymore right? So just like that. And let me put this on a new line, same line actually. So if that's the case, we bail out, we throw, an, we throw an error. Otherwise we can do this. And you can see that we got rid of the else statement. Another um, example is, so within my bookmark, line 52 and 43, I think. So have a look. If the user is not equal to null. So I think here, 
what you could do actually is we can take all of this. So in here, instead of doing a get, you can say dot or else throw, right? So or else throw, we're going to throw your exception that you had at the bottom. So just like that. Now all of this can come out and we can get rid of all of that. So no need for else in there and we return just like that. And obviously this is saying to me that unchecked assignment, so on and so forth, but that's not what I'm, what I'm focusing on here. Then I think it was line, so line 43. So another example here, what was with this here? We get the username from here. And at this point, I think you should be doing the check right above. So in here, so we can even move this in here. And because you're using optionals, dot or else throw new, uh, basically, let me just paste and put this on a new line. <laughs> and there we go. So you can see that this is much better. So now we have the user in here, then we authenticate and so on and so forth. So here it's not much of a if statement, but it's just an improvement on here. So let's just move on to the second one. So I think uh, that was it. I think common service if exists. So we have exists and then we get the ID. So I think all of this should be in here at the very top. So at the very top of the function and so exists, right? So we push all this all the way up. So if it doesn't exist, we throw an exception. Otherwise we get the user and I think maybe you could um, do some joining in there. So you get uh, basically the user and then you could perform the condition in, in it as well. But here again, you could say or else and then you, you carry on basically what you're doing. So you can see that we are bailing out as soon as we can. So moving on to the second one. So patient portal, uh, I can't remember exactly who sent me this, but I've got bookmark patient. So in here, what are we doing? Have a look. We have patient local find user by username. So if it's not equal to null, which is fine, uh, else blah, blah, blah. So I think here we can get rid of the else just like that. And you should really be throwing an exception. So here, so if the user is equal to null, then you might throw uh, an exception and then know the client that uh, basically this wasn't a, a 200, right? It didn't, basically you need to tell the client exactly what happened instead of uh, swallowing things, right? So here, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just gonna return because we don't want this to carry on. And you can see that how we got rid of the uh, else condition in there. And also we are bailing out in here. Cool. So then I think moving on to cinema rest service, if I go to bookmarks, I think there's only two in here and I've just picked some at random. So line 44 and 58. So let's just check them out. So 44 in here, check this out. So if it's present, you perform a delete otherwise, right? So what we do is we want to reverse this, right? So we want to say, uh, if, so if it's empty, I want to return that. Otherwise, I want to perform the delete. I can get rid of the empty or the else statement. There we go. And boom, you can see that this is much better, right? And finally, I think it was line 58. So 50, now it's 56 basically. So We've got the optional again, so uh, attachment in here, and don't call this optional, just call it attachment. So basically, so we want to reverse this and we get rid of the else altogether. So just like that, like that, and this will be there. And we say that if this is empty, just like that. And now we can basically paste that in, in there, and have a look how we improved our code significantly. <laughs> I can't even say that word properly, <laughs> but cool. So um, there we go. Hopefully this uh, made sense. I, th I thought maybe I would uh, record a video on how you can write better if statements. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, comment down below and let me know if um, you have anything to say about, um, you know, the way I've done if statements and whether you, you, you do it or not. Um, 
but yeah i just want to know what 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 is your opinion if you're not part of the amigo school community go ahead and join also smash down that like button so i can keep on recording videos like this and uh yeah so for now i'll catch you on the next one assalamualaikum